Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Evening Devotion. It is 418 right now. We just got back in the house and got everything put down. And we actually went and got my mother-in-law a car today. My uh, mom actually uh, loaned her the cash to buy one. We found a super good deal because she needed it because her van was in sad shape. And uh, she wanted something smaller anyway. And so we got her a really good, found a great deal. And the more I look at it, the better the deal gets. There's so many new parts on this car. It's amazing. So we just got back from North Austin getting that. And uh, yeah, it was it was a long haul, but we made it. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to do the Daniel video today. I'm going to do the Daniel video tomorrow uh, at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. And I will post this on the community tab so that everybody else knows in, in case somebody's waiting for that video but doesn't watch the devotions um, so that we're, we're all on the same page. Uh, yeah, it just took too long today to get that get back here uh, after doing that. But tonight, we're going to read out of Galatians 5.18, If ye be led by the Spirit, or led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. In the New King James, but if you are led by the Spirit, meaning the Holy Spirit, you are not under the law. Now let's go up here and get some context. Uh, these are titled, Keep in Step with the Spirit. Uh, let's see, two, three, four, five... Uh, let's see. Okay, let's start in verse... No? 10? Yeah, start in verse 10. I have confidence in you in the Lord, that you will have no other mind, but he who troubles you shall bear his judgment, whoever he is. That's a, a kind of a curse that Paul put on anybody from that time forward who would do such a thing. Well, we have a lot of people doing that today. And I, brethren, if I still preach circumcision, why do I still suffer persecution? Then the offense of the cross has ceased. I could wish that those who troubled you would even cut themselves off. For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. Don't take advantage of God's grace. Don't take advantage of the liberty you have. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. All the law is fulfilled by this one thing. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said the same thing. John repeated it. Love and faith. Verse 15, and this is a kicker for today. But if you bite and devour one another, beware. Beware lest you be consumed by one another. That's a big issue today, and I've noticed a lot of other people are starting to address it. That's good. People need to talk about that because it's a bad problem. We shouldn't be doing it. They come to my channel and attack me. I don't go to their channels and attack them. We're not supposed to be doing that. Now, keep in step with the Spirit. Verse 16, I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another. This is why we're always in turmoil. So that you do not do the things that you wish. You struggle because of this fight that's going on within you. But if you are led by the Spirit, which means you'll be led by love, you are not under the law. Now, the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery in all its forms, fornication in all its forms, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, hatred is a big one today, contentions, that's a big one today, jealousies, that's a big one today, Outbursts of wrath, that happens often. Selfish ambitions, that one too. Dissensions, heresies, both of those. Envy, murders. You know, hating someone because they disagree with you is considered murder by Jesus. He says that. Drunkenness, revelries, and the like in all its forms, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in the time in time past that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. If you are a practice of that, if you seek to do that, and I've talked about these people recently, if you seek to do these things, you are a practicer of, the, of, of such iniquities. You will not inherit the kingdom of God, period. Now, they don't like that. They fight against me on that. They don't like that. Well, you don't have to like it. The Bible makes it very clear. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Joy, peace, long-suffering, that's patience, kindness, 
goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. Several of those listed have crowns associated with them. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Let us not do that. He who looks at his own character and position from a legal point of view will not only despair when he comes to the end of his reckoning, but if he be a wise man, he will despair at the beginning. For if we are to be judged on the footing of the law, there shall no flesh living be justified. A lot of people, even re very recently, somebody in their little diatribe they were throwing out there with, with their hatred of, from their heart, talking about, we need to follow the law. How can you do that? You tell me how you do that. If you're listening and you believe this, but you haven't spoken up yet, tell me how to do that. Because no human being in all of history has ever accomplished this except for one, Jesus Christ. When he was born as a man. No one else has done this. No one. So how do you do that? You can't. You either fulfill all of it or you don't fulfill any of it. There is no middle ground. How blessed to know that we dwell in the domains of grace and not of law. When thinking of my state before God, the question is not, am I perfect in myself before the law, but am I perfect in Christ Jesus? Because it is his perfection that is imputed unto us. It is his holiness that is imputed unto us. It is his grace and his faith and his status and his position and his everything that is imputed unto us. It can't be about us. That is a very different matter. We need not inquire, am I without sin naturally? But have I been washed in the fountain open for sin and for uncleanness? You think you're without sin? You're a liar. The Bible says you're a liar in multiple places. Instead, the question should be, I don't like this because he's asking the right questions. Instead is, have I been washed? Am I actually saved? It is not, am I in myself well-pleasing to God? And a lot of us get, get stuck in that rut because that's what Satan likes. He likes us questioning, am I pleasing to God? No, I'm not pleasing to God. I need faith. Whose faith? Jesus' faith imputed unto me, given to me by the Holy Spirit. Then I am pleasing to God because when he looks at me, he sees Christ. But it is, because the question isn't, am I in myself well-pleasing to God? But it, it is, am I accepted in the Beloved? Am I in Christ? The Christian views his evidences from the top of Sinai and grows alarmed concerning his salvation. It were better far if he read his title by the light of Calvary. Why, saith he, my faith has unbelief in it. It is not able to save me. Suppose he had considered the object of his faith instead of his faith. Then he would have said, there is no failure in him, and therefore I am safe. If Christ is good, we have nothing to worry about. The question is, are we in Christ that we can make such a boast? I can't boast in nothing but Christ. I can't boast in myself. It's impossible. He sighs over this hope. Ah, my hope is marred and dimmed by my anxious carefulness about present things. How can I be accepted? How many of us have asked ourselves that question or even asked God that question? Lord, why me? How can I be saved? Even after we were, we were saved. Had he regarded the ground of his hope, he would have seen that the promise of God stands sure. The promises to him who believes will be granted eternal life. And that whatever our doubts may be, the oath and promise never fail. Ah, believer, it is safer always for you to be led of the Spirit into gospel liberty than to wear legal fetters. Judge yourself at what Christ is rather than at what you are. Listen to this question and, and, and ponder this. Judge yourself at what Christ is rather than at what you are. If you judge yourself at what you are, you are not going to find anything good or redeeming. You must judge yourself in Christ. What is imputed unto me? That is what I should be looking at. Satan will try to mar your peace by reminding you of your sinfulness and imperfections. You can only meet his accusations by faithfully adhering to the gospel and refusing to wear the yoke of bondage. When Satan comes and he calls you, remind yourself, because in doing so you remind him, because he's listening. I feel doubts and fears. 
and questions enter my mind, but I know I am safe in Jesus Christ because I believe on his holy name because what he is is imputed unto me. Therefore, I have nothing to fear. If I doubt, it's, it's useless, it's worthless because it's not about me, it's all about him. So if Satan is trying to convince me otherwise, I remind him as I remind myself. It is not of me, it is of him. I am saved because of him, not because of me. A lot of people think, well, I made the decision. I am this. As soon as you say I, you've made a mistake. As soon as you make it anything at all about you, you've made a mistake. It's about him. Somebody asks you, well, well how, how, do you, are you, how do you know you're saved? Well, I did a prayer. I said this. I go to church. I do all these things. I, I, I. No, it's not I. The answer, the proper response should be because Christ said, if I believe, I'm saved. And I have eternal life. Because the Bible tells me that I'm saved if these things exist and I find these things not because of me but because of him the first thing we must do is point to him that's our testimony Christ came to me in a 26 foot well no, it wasn't even 26 24 foot RV at Greyhound RV Park in Corpus Christi Texas on Leopard Street in the middle of the afternoon when the babies were asleep my wife was at work in the middle of the book of Matthew and I knelt down and responded to his call. I couldn't help it because he was beckoning me so loudly, I could not help but respond. It had nothing to do with me. It had everything to do with him. I responded because he gave me the ability to respond. I said yes because he gave me the ability to say yes. It cannot be anything of me. It must be everything of him. As soon as I make it about me, I have taken what he has done and I've dashed it on the rocks and said, it's not good enough. I must make it about him at all times and at all costs. It cannot be about me at all. Well, you're not that good of a person. You're right, I'm not. Thank God I have Christ to save me. Well, I think I'm going to heaven because I'm a good person. Good people go to hell. Good people go to hell. Sinners go to heaven. Jesus said, I didn't come to save, I didn't come to save the good. I came to save sinners. His blood was shed for us, for sinners. If you seek to be justified by the law, you've made a grave error. And the warnings in the Bible allude us to that fact very clearly. Do not seek to be justified by the law, but seek to be justified by Christ, by God, through Christ. Not by me, not by you, not by some pastor somewhere with a, with a mail order degree in divination. And what does the Bible say about divination? Hello. Divination is akin to witchcraft. And yet that's one of the requirements when you go to seminary is to go take classes in divination. Excuse me? I don't think so. You can have that stuff. I'll take my Holy Spirit-led study in the Bible right here in my living room, right here in my house, right here on the cell phone when we read these scriptures. And every day I pray the Holy Spirit speaks through me to give you guys words of encouragement, words of truth, words to lead you further down the path that you're walking towards him. If you be led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. We're not under the law because it is the Spirit that leads us. The law doesn't lead us down the narrow path. The law leads us the other direction. The Spirit leads us down the path to Him. And they try and try to get us to, to distract it. Hey, look at this over here. Nope. Hey, look at that over there. Oh, hey, that's kind of cool. And then somebody walks off the path. Put your head down. Don't look at them. Don't listen to them. And they start saying their little things, give me scripture. What? Give me scripture. What do you mean scripture? Give me scripture that supports this. Well, there's nothing per se in the Bible about it, then I'm not interested. You can't just tie it all up in the Bible. We have to, we have to question those things. We have to go in and look at other stuff. No. All I need is what the Lord said. My desire is his word. No one else's. You enjoy whatever you're doing. I'm not interested. Because I know what's going to happen to you if you stay that course. Nope, not happening. I'm staying here with the Lord because it is all him.
It must be all him, because I find in myself no good thing. A lot of people say, well, I'm a good person. I'm nice and I'm nothing. I, I, I can't join you in that assertion about yourself. I can't, because when I look at myself, I don't see anything good. I only see good in him. And because I have him and he has me, I have good because his goodness is imputed unto me. You think you're a good person? Congratulations. I can't join you there. I'm not a good person. I'm a sinner that needs saving, and the Lord has done that. And I believe that because I asked him, Lord, show me that I may preach your word confidently, that I may give my testimony confidently, that I may help others become confident in your truth and in their salvation in you. For he keeps our salvation. He keeps our eternal life sustained in heaven, waiting for that day when we join there. The family, the family of lights, the family of the skies, the family of the clouds, the family of God. Lord, make us understand, make us believe, make us stop looking at ourselves and others and look to you only, always for your glory. Amen. Guys, thank you for joining me for evening devotion. I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name, and I'll see you in the next video.